Hello and welcome to Octopus Do. I'm Christian Ross. I'd like to introduce you to my new series, which is called Tentacle Tips. It was going to be two minute tips, but uh, I figured we'd go with the octopus theme here. And um, these are just quick little tips that I think will help make your jewelry making experience a little bit easier. Things I've learned throughout my experience and things that I've learned from other people that I think could really help. Today's tentacle tip is going to be involving jump rings and chain mail. And I want to talk to you about aspect ratio. And aspect ratio is basically just the way that the chainmail rings fit together. It's the ratio between the inside opening of a chainmail ring and its actual gauge. So pretty much it's the amount of room that you have to work with. So first let's talk about the anatomy of a chainmail ring. Basically a chainmail ring is generally a standard jump ring and jump rings are round rings that have a cut opening that you can open and close and you can use them to attach other jump rings to each other like with chainmail or you can use them to attach a clasp to a bracelet and things like that or even charms to a bangle. They're different from split rings which are more like key rings where the ends overlap each other and you kind of have to pry an opening and slide in the other ring. Um, these are more simple and like I said, you just open and close them. Another word for these is butted rings when you're talking about chainmail, and that is because the ends are butted up against each other as opposed to overlapped and riveted. Yeah, seriously. So looking at the different parts of a jump ring. The first thing that I'll start with is the outside diameter and diameter is from one side to the other, not circumference, not all the way around. The second measurement, which is a lot more important is the inside diameter. Now the inside diameter is the amount of space inside your jump ring from one side to the other. This will tell you how many rings will fit inside that jump ring and that will limit your style design. Both the outside diameter and the inside diameter are generally measured in millimeters or inches. The third also very important measurement that you're going to need to take is the gauge of your jump ring. The gauge of your jump ring tells you how thick the wire that makes up the jump ring is. Now this is really important because this also tells you how many jump rings will fit inside another one. Because if you have even a small inside diameter, but a large gauge, you're not going to get as many jump rings inside the other one, of course. Gauge is generally expressed as a number. Um, for chain millers with jewelry, the most common gauge sizes you're going to run into are 18 gauge and 20 gauge. Gauge is a little different because the larger the number, the smaller the ring actually is. It's just like wire. Now, modern gauge, uh, the number doesn't really have the significance other than whether it's a larger number or a smaller number that it used to. The ancient significance of this was the gauge was the number of times a wire was pulled through a draw plate to become smaller. So if you have an ingot and you pull it through five times, it's going to be rather large. If you keep pulling it through 32 times and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then obviously a 32 gauge is going to be smaller than your five. Little known bit of trivia there. When you're measuring aspect ratio, you will have to convert your gauge size to a millimeter or inch size, but we'll get into that later. A little bit more on chain melt math coming up. And then the last part of a jump ring that I want to mention is another kind of trivia point here. It's called the kerf, K-E-R-F. And what the kerf is, 
that's the part of the chainmail ring or the jump ring that has been cut out by your cutters, by the saw that was used to cut it or whatever method was used to cut the ring off of a spring. Obviously, the smaller the kerf, the better, and the larger the kerf, when you close your jump ring, you may end up with an oval jump ring instead of round because that much of a chunk has been taken out. So that's just something to be aware of. Now that's all the parts of a chainmail jump ring. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to get into more about aspect ratio and how that affects your chainmail. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click on notifications, all of that. Leave me a comment below. Find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram. I'm all over the place. That's why you need eight arms. <laughs> Until next time, go make something.